the plot was not plotting. See, yeah, shower, I am a shower. The only thing that differentiates me from you is the fact that you can package. Package me and I will show you. Sharon put clothes, off clothes, told her, see, I have the body, I will sell market for you. All that said is done, all that's done. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dima Otutu and if this is your first time seeing this beautiful face, please don't make it your last by subscribing to the channel. On this channel, I mostly do vlogs, lifestyle, and then I react to controversial topics. Sometimes I bring my friends and we play games here and there, just everything in between. If you like vibes, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos. And if you end up enjoying this particular video, do well to give me a thumbs up as it helps you to push out my content to more users to watch. Now, this particular movie today, guys, I'm boiling. It's a movie review, um, a movie that was just released last night on Netflix um, called Glamour Girl. See, if my voice is coerced, I just woke up. I watched this movie around two. I was so angry. I almost shot this movie around 2 a.m. I was like, no. Let me not come here angry. We don't support violence here. Let me sleep and wake up and rearrange my thoughts and then try and see how I can review this movie because the plot was not plotting. Glamour Girls, let me give you a quick backstory. Glamour Girls was an old movie that was shot in the um, 90s by some very big Nollywood babes back then. And then there's this particular studio, Charles of Clay, that's... Um, play network studio or something. So what they do is that they reenact old Nigerian movies. I would say they've been doing well with the ones they've been releasing, like Blood Sisters, I enjoyed it. Rattlesnake, yeah, Rattlesnake, or Neka the Pretty Serpent, I can't remember, one of them, I enjoyed it, right? Yeah, Rattlesnake, Neka the Pretty Serpent, those, yeah, they've done them and they were good. So these glamour girls, the hype was everywhere. I mean, I was excited because I wanted to see it. And then the um, the premiere they gave us, like the, sorry, the trailer they gave us, energy was high up. I was like, hey, hey, waiting the call, bring movie. Guys, 20 minutes into the movie, the plot was not plotting. I said, ah, I'll be, am I watching parody? What, what's going on? But first of all, hats off to the actresses. A, the glamour was glamouring. I won't even lie. And say, Donna, the, the babe of the babe. She was the head prostitute. Like, she was the one arranging babes for um, politicians. And then we have my Shabebe, Sharon. See, these people, the actresses, they played their part. Most of them, not everyone. Most of them played their part so well. But, yeah, yeah. A lot of things were missing, guys. See, if you've not watched it, I don't even know if I would recommend you go on Netflix and watch it because I was not satisfied. I was not satisfied. If you go on Twitter, you see people are angry. I don't. People are angry, right? So we just the quick summary: just prostitutes trying to make it, but make it <laughs> make it in a very classic way. So we have Donna, who is instead instead played as Donna. So Donna is this very high class chick. Like politicians, they 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 like they bring money to Donna because she arranges the best of the best for them. And then we have Shabebe, Sharon Oja, who played as Emanuela, this very local girl that, you know, from a very poor home, she's taking care of two of her siblings. She joined this particular group of prostitutes and she got framed. And then she was introduced to Donna. At first, Donna didn't find her classy, but Sharon was like, see, babe. That's, no, Sharon did her acting really well. Say, see, babes, you be a shower, I be a shower. If you're not English or you're not Nigerian, a shower means prostitute. <laughs> so she was like, ah, babe, see, you're a shower, I am a shower. The only thing that differentiates me from you is the fact that you can package. Package me and I will show you. Sharon put clothes, off clothes, told her, see, I have the body, I will sell market for you. Just arrange me, package me well. And that was what so did for Donna because Donna does not arrange nonsense small, small girls, no. And then we have Gemma who is Jocelyn Dumas. I love Jocelyn. Oh, her body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's so pretty. So Jocelyn is also, she played as Gemma. She was also this very high babe that did things with Donna. And then she fell in love with a client. But then she and Donna fell out because that was like a broke code that you're not supposed to, you know, break. And um, so she, she was suffering on her end because her husband was sick and in the hospital and almost all the money they had, they were using it to take care of the husband. 
So she she now needed help and she wanted Donna to help because you know Donna is very rich. So she came back to Donna and was like, Oh Donna, that please she needs money, that she even wants to sell her land. Donna was like, If you want me to give you money, I they sell my body, you guys can't sell your body, which I don't even find an issue with. Fine. You get this is what we are doing. I'm selling my body, I cannot come and dash you money. Bring your body, collect money, you still have your body going on for you. The babe, as married woman, where she be, she said, oh, and she doesn't want to do that. She even came with her landed property, the document to sell. Donna said the land is not in a choice area. Say she no one sell her. So the girl said she's not <laughs> coming back to prostitution, and then she walked out. And then we have Louis, who um, was played by Toke Makenwa. I love Toke off screen, on screen. She's my babe. I watch her a lot on YouTube. I watch her. I love her. Well, in Glamour Girls... Toke was not talking. The acting was a bit too much. I don't know if they told her to do it because this is not her first movie I'm watching. So I don't know what happened. Toke was, her acting was not it. But then in the movie, she got married to this very local man, this, my Anambara brother that was so in love with his very beautiful wife. But he lived abroad and the wife was always sending money. Or girl was madly in love. You know, when you have an independent woman that makes money, that was what happened, and this man came back to Nigeria. <laughs> this this evil man came back to Nigeria to be with the love of his life. And then every night Tokyo would dress up, say she has clients that <laughs> need dress, wedding dress to be so. Or girl would be like, I, I, which kind of job way they do like this? That every night they come out. But Sha, that's um this then we have another babe. Her name was Helion. They call her hell. She was a junkie, but she was also a prostitute. So she's she's one of um Donna's high babes too. But her own acting to her I, anytime it comes to her scene, I want them to move it because everything was just too much. Everything was too much. She she was always high on coke and she eventually died. So there was really nothing much to her, honestly. She eventually died. I was like, ah good. So that's it though, guys. So as Sharon joined this babe. They were, you know, they would go for parties. Even Sharon got one manga because Sharon was framed in her first, the, her first clique. She was framed by this politician's bodyguard called Zeri Bay. And um, Zeri Bay, the, that was how she got fired and she, I think I've mentioned, and then she went to meet Donna. So um, she was in this party and a lot of babes, the politicians have collected babes. And you know, because it's her first time. So she, she was just sitting, I was like, I, that she's a very fine girl. That, why is nobody coming to her. That was how that Zeribe boy that got her fired appeared. And Zeribe was like, okay, that I owe it to you. I don't worry. I'm going to that. He he wants her for himself. The girl was like, well, boy, boy like you. Which me, I, I'm happy she did not, but for now. Say, boy, boy like you that I can't, you know, be with it. I'm looking for a very big one. He now said, okay, that he's going to make it up to her. That she ha He has this new boss. And then he introduced this, um, um, introduced Sharon, that's Emma, to the boss. And the boss <laughs> the first time they met, the boss was watching football and Sharon was into the game. I think that was what got the man interested and the man switched her life. Boom! From zero to hundred. Bought her a house, bought her a car, even made her um, a bank manager or something. <laughs> made her a bank manager and that was how Sharon moved from the trenches. That's how she moved from the trenches to the big man world. And yeah, if you see now, this story is what? Everywhere. So they had this very high class party that they invited everybody. And then Donna also invited Gemma that she should come. Uh, if she comes for the party, that she'll give her all the money she wants. So that's how Gemma came for the party. So she was feeling, you know, like, you know, I don't they do this thing since. And it's been long I did it. And I don't think I fit into this place. So she'd not mingle with the crowd. So she was just standing in one place as big babe where she be. And then we have Lynx. One, um, he's a musician. He, Lynx was looking hot. He was fine. <laughs> Lynx was a, Lynx is a very fine boy. So he came fresh. He came fresh. So Lynx now came to her and was like, uh, and his name is in the movies, Alexander. He came to her and was like, Ada, why are you standing here? The boy, he was just a mature. Talk. You know, this very, we, we met the first night and we hit it off, according to my friend. That was just what it was for Gemma and Alexander, that's Link. And they were very cute. So the Link was very straight to the point. He told the babe, I want to... The girl was like, he took the girl to the room. As he took the girl to the room, 
the girl was fidgeting. That's Gemma. I guess because you know her husband had not yet died, but he was he was almost dead because he was just on life support. So the girl was like that. Oh, it's been long. The boy was like, oh, we don't have to do anything. Eventually, eventually, everything happened. And when everything happened, the girl was like, Ada, uh, what do you do? The guy was like that. He owns this place, but he's not a big boy. The girl was like, um, Gemma was like, how are you know a big boy when? You own this place and now found a necklace on his neck. Was like, I asked that this is not a small necklace. The boy was like, Yes, that is a billionaire chain. Because what the boy does is he's an accountant, he manages money for the billionaires, all those politicians that Donna, you know, um, arranges babes for. Jama and the guy hit it off. As they hit it off, the guy started coming to the house and all of that. As one day they showed us that he slept over at the house, and then when Jemma woke up, Gemma was looking for the, the guy. I was like, Alex, Alex, you know, see Alex. He, she woke up, went downstairs. What we saw, guys, what they showed us was just, she opened the door. She looked shocked. And that was it. The next thing is we see talk, um, Donna and say, but she did her role very well. They are, they are acting, they did well, but it was just the storyline. Next thing we saw and said, but with Red Chair and with her PA, they were coming to the babe's house. As they came in, they just showed us, they brought the red chair, told the boys that brought the red chair to go. So she and the PA, they entered the room. They just showed us Gemma carrying her son, crying. He hurt my baby, he hurt my baby. We know that he was molesting the child, but they did not tell us. We just shall know that he hurt my baby. Next thing, we saw Lynx dead on the floor. How it happened, we did not know. We just saw him on the floor, dead. They package him, put him in the chair, and wheeled the chair out. And then we also have another place where Okuma Kenwa was um, holding a party because the husband was already back, holding a party for the daughter, I think the doctor's birthday. And next thing, we saw one very big politician that came. The children ran and shouted, Uncle Daddy, which means, if you understand this very well, the person that maybe the guy that has been coming to the house constantly. So the husband was like, ah, ah. The guy came to her boutique. He found her. The boy came with matches, cutlass. Looked for her. Next thing. Guys, this thing, I'm telling you, I'm not cracking it. I'm not um, making it up. Next thing, he came with matches that she should move. She should move. Next thing, we saw him. He was shocked. What he saw, we did not know. What he did with the matches, we did not know. Next thing, he carried the children and told Tucker that she would be sending money. And then the end end, as Alex died now, politicians were angry. That you no, know, the politicians came and met Donna. That where is Alex? Because he was holding their all their money. He was one managing their money around fifteen billion dollars or so. That was what, you know, around fifteen billion. No, what they said first was ten billion dollars. So they were start looking for Alex. Justin Dumas had to take the son to the parents' place. And then everywhere, the politicians were harassing the prostitutes. They would come to their offices. They would come to the bank where because um, Sharon's man made her a bank manager and all of that. So they were, they were not coming to Donna. That was happening. Why did she mess up? That where is the Alex? Like everybody's harassing Donna. It needs to stop. That's how Donna started looking for a solution. She entered boats, went to meet two high women. Who are these women? We don't know. We just know that she knelt down. Queen Mother, help me. Guys, <laughs> I don't know. This movie, eh? Queen Mother, help me. Queen Mother said, what will you get in the end? She said, gratitude. That part ended. And then Sharon Noja stays sleeping with Jerry Bay because the politician's daughter that she was sleeping with met her at her bank and embarrassed her. Me, I was shocked that she was embarrassed though, because if you're a prostitute, own it with your chest. If I'm the one, like the way the girl came and harassed Sharon, Sharon was scared. I said, yes, what are you doing here? Call security, send the girl out. The girl went home, telling the, uh, the politician that her daughter insulted me. I don't know what she was expecting the politician to do. The politician said, but my daughter did not lie. That was how Shara, Shara baby got angry, went upstairs. Um, the bodyguard came up, that madam, you have to go down, the guy has not gone. Sharon said, me, I want you. The man said, no, I don't want Emma, because they polished her name to Emma, that he wants Emanuela. At the end, end, Sharon had sex with the guy. The politician heard the moaning noise. There was no reaction. They did not tell us if the politician sent her away. If the politician did not, not seen. Sure, at the end, they found, Justin Dumas came back, found the USB, and then Emma told the Zeribe guy that Alex did not disappear, that he died. 
um, that okay, they found the USB. They were now looking for who hacked the who hacked the USB so that they would bring out the money that was locked. Terry so now went and brought um one guy from France, a big Congolese. I don't even know where they brought the boy from. The boy does not speak English, he just speaks French. The boy was decoding the thing, but he said that he wanted um, an incentive as he's working. What was the incentive? He wanted to have sex with Sharon. Zeribe told Sharon that, see, that this is their deal to cut out, that the girl should have sex with the boy, that after this thing, they will take the money and escape. That's how Sharon went, had sex with the boy. Ugh. Had sex with the boy, and instead, it was still in Lebanon, where she was with Queen Mother, trying to arrange things. I mean, Queen Mother, she came back, and the boy was decoding the stuff. For decoding the stuff, um, the boy, um, Zeribe was like, oh, that let them share the money because Gemma was there, Donna was there, Sharon was there, and then the Zeribe boy, this the the boy boy, the security guy, um, the bodyguard. So Zeribe was like, do you know how much you are talking about? It? Like these politicians should can't, that you don't you can't go anywhere. Like, abroad is where they base, and they will find you whether you like it or not. As Donna was trying to explain why this boy stole one of because they were two. Donna had turned to two um flash drive. The boy stole one. Next thing, the politician barged into the room. That where's his money? So the part, the remaining flash drive that was not on the desk, Donna was like, this is it. The man came with one IT girl, told the girl, she's checking if the money is intact. The girl said there was no money there. So um, Sharon was like that. Um, Donna was like that. They should ask the Zeribe boy. Zeribe said ah, that his dear mother that was planning to run away with her. He's not with anything. Sharon now came close to him, was like, oh, God, no, they do this thing. Bring her a flash before they shoot somebody. The boy, the same thing he did to her at the beginning of the movie, carried the flash and transferred to Sharon. Sharon now is not, became wiser. As he put it inside Sharon's clothes, Sharon carried it back and put it in his clothes without him knowing. And then when they were now searching, they found it on the boy. They took the boy out. Then all of a sudden again, when everybody left, it was just remaining Sharon, um, Donna, and Gemma. Donna would now put her hand under her wig, brought out another flash drive. Where that flash drive came from? I don't know. Next thing, she said, who wants to party? Gemma got angry and left. I don't know why she was angry. Sharon left, and then next thing, Sharon came back again. A movie finished. Guys, <laughs> this was what happened. It was just scattered and everywhere. I don't even know what they did. See, the storyline, the movie, Right, flashy, nice actresses. The car ah, the babes were looking. Whoever did their costume, whatever did well, they were looking good. But how this movie got destroyed was just the storyline. It was just scattered. The plot was not plotting. See, I don't know if you watched it. Help me come to conclusion. What happened? You can leave it in the comment section. Tell me because me, I'm trying to. I don't know. I was not really impressed. I really wanted more. I really needed more from them and they didn't give it. So that's just all I have to say. I will not tell you to go. Maybe you can go and watch it and then come and explain in the comment section. <laughs> but it was just, a, seriously, it was a waste of two hours. I wouldn't lie. Like, I wanted more. I wanted more, guys. I wanted more. So that was what happened. You see, like, I just wish that they didn't rush it. I just wish that they had time to just develop every story. They will try to develop a story, bam, they will leave it for another thing. See, that was just it. I just wish we knew how Lynx died. What did they do with the body? Do you get? What did the politician do to Sharon? Like, did he, what happened? Did they fight it out? Did he um, confront her? What, what happened with, what happened? What did Tucker's husband, that, what did um, Louis's husband see? That's talking. What did what did her husband see? That we did not. Why didn't they show it? Like what? Why? And then what again? Like if, I don't know. Everything was just scattered for me. I just I just wish they. I just wish they did. They, they just. <laughs> you see, I'm even struggling. So if you understood the movie, let me know in the comments, please, because me I'm try. That's why I, I, the summary was just very short, because I don't know. Glamour, they gave us glamour. The girls were classic. It was the Sharon acted so well. Donna acted so well. Lynx was looking fun. <laughs> like they did well with the acting. Not everybody. Because I was questioning Toke. I was questioning Helion. Um, Toke's husband at some point still overdoing it. I'm like, hey. Charles of Play, what happened? Tell us. What, what is it? If you watch this video, which I doubt you do, but just tell her what happened. Because 
we we love we I love all the ones they've reenacted, but this particular one was not plotting. Like if it was just everywhere. Like you know, like like for me to have watched it to the end was just I was just hoping, okay, oh, maybe they are doing mystery. Maybe at the end everything will make sense. We we're just and my friends and I were just waiting, okay, to make sense. Let's give it hope. Let's give it hope. And at the end, the hope was hopeless because there was nothing. There was nothing, guys. So that is just all I have to say for the video. Of that is all I have to say for the movie. Let me know what you guys think. If you've watched it, please leave it in the comment section. What do you think? Everybody on Twitter is angry. People are angry on Twitter, but like, ah, I mean, I just hope that maybe any other one they want to reenact, they don't do what they did with this one because a lot of people are like, you would have just left the old glamour girls for us like that. But yeah, that is it, guys, and. Let me know what you guys think and let me also know what other movie you'd want me to review. Another movie I would recommend if you haven't watched, maybe if you just want to clear this anger you have for Nollywood so you can keep watching Nollywood movies, I enjoy them. Go and watch Breaded Life on Netflix. It's actually a nice 